And welcome to AIL TV, and most import importantly, welcome to For You Too magazine, live magazine. I am here as a facilitator. I'm not going to waste much of your time, but the lady who is in charge of For You Too magazine is Sonia Kamara. And you're welcome to Sonia Kamara. The floor is yours. Welcome to For You Too News Mag. Thanks for that, Joseph. Joseph always says, oh, the person. But you know, it's not just me. It's actually a group community effort that's put together For You Too News Mag. The magazine is all about communities and it's all about you. We like to hear your news, your views. We want to hear your woes as well because sometimes things are not working out. And guess what? We want to hear about that. We see communities, and we give communities voices. Today on the show, we are celebrating a few things, honoring a few things, and noting a few things. One of the things that we're celebrating is the fact that we have an organization, Parents Together, that has managed to keep their service fluid and continue to work with parents and young people in the borough of Haringey. We have a director, the facilitator, a parent, and a young person who's gonna be telling us all about the service. We're going to be talking about mental health awareness week because it is a week that um, is going to impact on lots of people whether they realize it or not we've got some spoken word from Haley. we've got jesslyn giving us some fashion tips and in between all of that we really want to hear what you the community are saying but let me start because we know i've got a time constraint let me go straight over to the individuals from parents together and I'm very pleased to have Roy St. John, who's a director, NCBI training, June Toot. I hope I said your name right, June, who's the facilitator for the group. And we have um, Oshola as well, Adi K with us. And we've got young St. Hillier, who are all part of Parents Together. So first of all, welcome um, guys to this uh, meeting. We're respecting social distancing. So everybody's in their right place, not breaking any rules. Yeah. Um, so welcome, thank you very much for being part of the show. Thank you, really delighted to be part of, part of this movement going forward. And you know, whilst we're in lockdown, there are some major benefits that's come out of it. And For You Too magazine is one of those. So thank you for making that happen. Okay, no, thank you as well. But what I wanted to start with, I, I read something that said that pure, poor, poorer pupils are worse affected by school closures amid rows over the reopening of schools. We know there's a big row going on. Um, and I saw something that said, on average, the state, the state schools that lower income children are from are less likely to provide online classes or other interactive services. And I wanted to um, touch on that a bit when I get into the conversation with you. Sure. Uh, also, that there's a report from the Education Policy Institute that's made quite a few recommendations because it seems that children from poorer backgrounds are falling behind with this lockdown. Oh, no. that we've got a young person in the space. But I wanted you, uh, Royston, to talk about how parents, parents together started um, you know, what exactly are you about? Um, and then we can ask the parent, the young person and a facilitator, literally how you've managed to, first and foremost, I've got to say testament, move the programme online. Because that's one thing that's been quite difficult. Lots of programmes are no longer operating. Schools are closed. So tell us about that. So firstly, NCBR as an organisation has actually been in existence for 36 years. Um, doing work across communities and 
um, I started NCBI in London 18 years ago. And um, we do work around people and emotional intelligence and have done a number of work with adults and worked in schools with young people. So Parents Together is a combination of bringing the experience of working with adults and the experience of working with young people to, to build that bridge. A lot of parents are finding now in lockdown that um, they are not quite together as they thought they were because they're in the same space for 24 hours. Um, the framework of going to school or going to work means that we can exhale and only have to hold our breath from the, you know, between five and 10 at night. You know, um, now we have to hold our breath 24 hours. And it's a struggle on both sides because we haven't really learned um, as well as we could how to, you know, parent, how to support each other. And to some extent, we've seen teachers and, um, I hate that cliche, but the state playing a part in bringing up our children for better or for worse. Now we have a chance as parents to actually influence the outcome and development of our children. And some parents don't know how to do that so well. That's really interesting because there's also a new report from the Institute for Fiscal Studies that shows that children from wealthier families are spending 30% more time each day on home learning mm -hmm with poor, poorer players. And that means this, this statement says that by the 1st of June, which is just around the corner, yeah. 500 pupils would have spent an average a week and a half less time studying than wealthier children. Yeah. Mm. Children in lower income households are less likely, one of the reasons they're saying is because they're less likely to have their own schoolwork, own space to do schoolwork. Yeah less likely to have a computer or tablet to use for school. So that's Absolutely. a lot of the points that you've just made. So yes. I just wanted to ask June, as a facilitator, how, how are you facilitating this programme with young people? With young people or families? Or families. Uh, yeah. So how are we doing that? We're going through via a Zoom. And even for myself, um, learning to use the computer has been a challenge because I have too long avoided using the, um, that type of technology. So we're using Zoom meetings and um, some people are trying to get on through by, via their phones. So slowly, slowly, everybody's, try, everybody's um, getting there. We're just teaching each other, really. So we, okay. so, we, so we adapt the program through slides, um, PowerPoint, and, and discussion. Yeah. So there's also an added logistics with that, because in the room, from time to time, we'll give them a handout that we use to discuss. Mm -hmm. Now that handout, we say we'll send you an email, or we'll um, put it in the chat and you can download it. But of course, those parents who've logged on on their phone because that's the only methodology they have, it's a struggle. They, they just can't manage that technology by phone. They need a computer. So the shortage of funds and money and support means that the parents are struggling and indeed the children are struggling with the schoolwork because they can't download the things that they need to download. And add to that, many don't have a printer at home in order to print out the work and, and, and do that work. Now, and what you've just said, because one thing that COVID-19 has actually flagged up, red flags all the way, is that the digital disadvantage are real. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that cannot be involved in crucial things because they don't have the resource. Yeah. Really. So, Charlotte, as a parent, what, what's mm -hmm. in your involvement been with the programme from a parenting point of view? Well, my involvement has been uh, wanting to learn. Um, you know, my children are actually older now, but I, I have grandchildren. And I wanted to make sure that not only could I, um, you know, relate in, in more positive ways, ways which are not related to the way in which I was brought up, which was kind of with the stick, um, ways which are enhancing for the self-esteem and the emotional intelligence of those young people. And I found through NCBI, 
that there's a, a series of techniques that have been really expertly shared that have enabled me to actually reflect. You know, I think that the most important thing that I've learned has been that, to, to reflect, because a lot of emphasis has been placed upon what is it that me, myself, what do we ourselves, um, what is it about us that either enhances or inhibits the, the learning of our children? What you're saying about the, the digital disadvantage, it's real. I mean, I work in the school, and I know that lots of the children who we want to work with and to do online programs with, they can't access them because they don't have the technology. And, and does that lead into people actually being missing out on, on schooling? Because some of the children that we know we're dealing with in Haringey, they have, they face all sorts of challenges from the start, you know, exclusions. Mm -hmm. you know, some of them have, have to rely on um, school meals. You know, they fit into a category that needs support. So with the closure of schools, is that having an additional impact on their, their learning? Absolutely. I mean, my son, he signs on every day to his school, provides um, online learning. However, at the same time, um, his class teacher sent a message to commend him for how involved he's been. But at the same time, it mentioned all the other children who have not been signing up, you know? So definitely there's a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. There is. So on the word disadvantage, not that we, we're not talking, we want to talk to the young person because the world belongs to you. We're just custodians. We're here to look after you. So St. Hilia, can you tell us about how, how the closure of school and home learning and parenting together has helped you? Um, so in terms of school closing, people could say that the year 11 students who are just finishing have a harder time but I think it would be my year, which would be year 10, because we're basically teaching ourselves right now. So for those people who don't have a computer, don't have anywhere to access it, they're missing out on so many things because the teachers are saying, they don't know if they're gonna have enough time to reteach really us the stuff that we've had to teach ourselves. So they're saying that if you, if you don't have a computer now and you can't catch up, there's no guarantees that when we go back to school, you're gonna be able to learn it. There's so no guarantee, and that's actually what yeah. the teacher's saying. Yeah, the teachers, they don't know at this at this point in time whether we're going to have to do the re redo the year again or if they're going to have to teach us the bits so in year 11 instead of going over the things we're going to have to learn them basically right. so instead of having to go over it if, so if we can't teach ourselves now if people have the equipment to teach themselves now they're basically missing out on all those things they missed out on everything until we go back to school mm -hmm. and the privilege of logging in sometimes people can't log into the stuff because the way our school is set up, you have to do it through your Heartland email. And if you try to do it on your phone, it tells you you have to download some security thing. And if you don't want to download that, you can't access your school emails. So it's a, like you have to download an app where it filters your phone to make it safe, basically. A, but, um, so safe, like a safeguarding procedure. Yeah. So if you don't now download that app on your phone, you won't be able to access your school emails until you've downloaded that app. So how are you, so how are you dealing with that then? So, you know, what's, what does your lesson plan look like? So, we, well, with us, our, with my school, my tutor, she sent out like a school rotor, so you just put your lessons on, what lessons you have, and you say what day you're going to do them, and then we weekly have uh, meetings on Zoom to say what we've done, how much I've done of it, and if we haven't done it, like there's a, that like we email the teacher and explain why we haven't done it, and they normally give us like extra time. I see. Okay, well, you know, Cecilia, what you've just saying, that's really interesting, because Haringey, these figures are from uh, the, the Haringey at a glance, an official document that was, pretty, that was actually published November 2019. And one of the things they say, Haringey, this was before COVID-19, ranked 65th in England for GCSE attainments out of 150 local authorities. Now it says the borough has improved considerably since its 2015 rank, which was 105. So you can see that the attainment has really sub jumped up substantially. And listening to what St. Helier said, there's definitely gonna be a challenge for young people 
you know, to, to continue their learning with these restrictions. So how, how, how are we as um, uh, Royston, how, for parents together, what advice are we giving parents to assist their, their, their children, you know, young people to continue learning? I mean, what, 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 what help is there out there for them? Well, um, the parents have got to do the best they can um, to, if you don't have the internet, then, you know, you get a book and try to keep your children reading, try to keep their mind open, try to sit with them and be proactive with them, play with them around activities to help them move forward. Um, the sad thing is that all the computers exist. The computers are in the school, the school's locked That's and the right. students at home, the, the very computers really? that they need is locked up in the building. Not accessible. Yeah, for the last seven weeks. And the logic was open a building, let the children have the computer for seven weeks at home. They That's can, a good idea. So yeah. what's happened with that? You know, and it's amazing that it, that hasn't happened. And as far as I'm aware, it hasn't happened anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, instead we're saying, well, um, the, the students haven't signed on. You know, they haven't signed on because they don't have the means. You know, and you think about Zoom is a relatively easy platform and how many people struggle to sign on to Zoom, <laughs> let alone an online learning um, structure, yeah. you know. Um, mm. So... It's, it's set up to fail um, the, the poor and the disadvantage. Yeah. Economical terms, time terms, access, all of those things are stacked against them. Against people that are... So, Shola, I wanted to... I know that you do a lot of work with um, young people um, who, who, who are not in mainstream education. I know mm -hmm. that you're, you're, you've been dedicated to that. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, it says that in Haringey, there's substantially there's substantial attainment gaps between different demographic groups. Black boys have the lowest attainment of all ethnic and gender, and gender groups, 52% attained, nine to four in English and maths, compared to mixed ethnic, um, ethnicity females who have the highest attainment with 80% achievements, which is really good, interesting, nine to four in English and maths. But boys have lower attainment scores in every ethnic group in all the wards in Haringey except Crouch End, Highgate, and Muswell Hill. Mm. Now, this is quite interesting because we look at the demographic divide. We all know that they're all all areas are divided, and Haringey is no different. There's a mm. massive divide between the east and the west, um, and that's around deprivation access. And what the young person in here is just really saying there is. This, this pandemic can actually impact on the lives of young people for their futures and their education and their learning. And, mm -hmm. and actually, Sinhila, you don't realise you've actually tapped, tapped on something because there's a recent report out for about social mobility and vulnerability, the learners policy from the Education Policy Institute. And they've got a series of policy recommendations for government. And this is designed to prevent significant widening the disadvantaged gaps between poor children and the rest of pupils. And one of the things they say, which I think is what, what the young, what Cynthia just said, is they suggest that Ofsted is suspends all inspections of schools until January 21, 2021. And they said they want to, they should, this is what the government should, issue guidance to schools to prevent a significant increase in inclusions and off rolling of pupils as schools return. So the young, the point that you've made there is when schools eventually go back, there's going to be disruption, which could lead to more exclusions, which leads to more disadvantage, you know, and that's that they're recommending that, you know, someone deals with that now, you know. So I wanted to ask you, June, um, as the facilitator, parent to your families, are your families um, sharing, you know, what, what the solutions are they? I know they're probably sharing their fears and anxieties, but are, are they coming up with solutions like Royston says so that they can maintain some sort of order in the household? Well, to be honest, a lot of the, the um, things that we talk about on Parents Together is not necessarily always directed at education. It's about wider things as well. As um, Shola was saying, we're talking about self-esteem. Um, grooming and things like that so these are the things we're trying to and, and spending time together and listening 
which will hopefully help parents to have a better communication with their children and their young people that they deal with. But um, one of the most important things that we're finding is that people are funnily struggling with their children's emotional state. Emotional state, yes. Yeah. And this is, and, and also recognizing that how, recognizing how better we could do things because. Mm -hmm. As much as being a facilitator, I myself are lear learning a lot more from the parents because yeah. we're finding that even though we may come from different ethnic, ethnic backgrounds and um, social, social status, yes. statuses, yes. The, the problems are the same. Mm. The issues are the same, if you get what I'm saying, to when you come to emotion, whether we're not spending enough time. And one thing we need to do is listen, actively listen to our, our young people and also encourage them to speak to us or if they can't get to the parent themselves we try to find somebody that they can find to support them mm. definitely so would you say that it would maybe a good idea if there was some form of counseling or coaching offered to young people in during the covid-19 it's part and parcel as the everyday curriculum Absolutely. i think i think for for the pet for the parents and <laughs> the people Both because we are put in a position where we are finding that our young people, we're learning things about our young people that we never knew before. Mm. Because you're seeing per, per, um, parts of their characteristics, things that they might not even like in you as a parent. So we're, learning, we're having to learn to adapt. And especially in your household with, with various ages and people with disability, which people are not even, I've not even heard anybody really mention about wow. um, young people and adults with disabilities because when you've got a house like that you know the challenges are great and also i've heard a lot of the times is trying to stop the children from sort of like hitting each other and and shouting at each other and so when we do parents together we try to um, give them methods techniques on how to bring about as i said um, learning listening and um having conversations and checking in i wanted to ask and hear this so what do you what's your thoughts about returning to school what do you think well i think it's going to be a challenge for everyone really because we're, at, we're in a position where we actually don't know what's going to happen right now so they're saying okay they think we're going to return in september but we don't know if we're returning in september for sure so it's a thing where we don't know if we're going to redo the year if we're going to go into our next year and where everyone is at because a lot of the teachers have not got back to us a lot of the teachers haven't got back to us so we don't know what's actually going to be happening because imagine we're going back to school we're getting new teachers we're getting new just a lot of new other things like a new timetable a new routine to get into but we haven't even finished our routine finished. last year so, so it's, it's a bit uncertain it's a bit like the uncertainty the way that the teachers put it out or presented it to us that's the only person we can go and ask. They say to go look on YouTube or to go look on the on the internet, but when we go and look, and we do do, and we do go and check that, and we write what's down there, what we've understood from that, they could come back and tell us that that's the wrong thing. Yeah. So it's again, it's the uncertainty and the not being able to communicate properly is the problem right now. I wanted to just quickly ask you and the team. So Five minutes. Happy Thursday. Every Thursday, people have a chance to join the Zoom meeting, as June said, and get involved, like Shola said. So yeah. it's interest in learning. So can you just let everybody know how they can get in touch with parents together and join your platform? Because there's valuable support and signposting and, and, you know, and really the support that's going on there, which we know people are interested to get involved. So can you yeah, you talk to this, please. Sure. Um, I'll share my number and June will share hers. But let me just say that once parents together is two hours on Thursday, um, literally every day this week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, I've been speaking to parents about some aspect of um, things that's going on. One of those, there are four generations of stuff that's happening and impacting that I'm in dialogue and conversation with the parents um, about how to go forward. So it's not just a two hour session. We are perpetually involved in supporting parents across the community. And this is a job that the, the council and others don't see that this is happening. You know, so it's major support work that's going on. Um, and so in terms of contact, um, 
my number is 07811-374-074, 07811-374-074. Email royston at rdjconsulting.co.uk. So royston, rdjconsulting.co.uk. And June's number? My number is 07 nine five eight seven five zero two double zero that's oh seven nine five eight seven five zero two double zero and we will we will then send people the link and invite them in and invite um, them in that's really good you know i really want you to keep up the good work you know people come back to us and ask us for information we're happy to share and signpost because right now this uncertainty as st helia said there's an anxiety in the air for every single one of us mm -hmm. knowing what next. What Parents you know? Together is life-changing for the parent, um, the, the guardian, the carer, as well as the child. And as June said earlier, we are all perpetually learning, you know, from each other as we go forward in this program. Yeah. Thank Could you so a... much. Oh. Yeah. Salah? Salah? Like, just to say quickly that in relation to what Santilia was saying, um, the fact that parents, through parents together, are spending more time with their children means that they understand the problem. Rather than blaming the child for not studying, they can see why the child is not the able challenge. to do the challenge. And then Thanks. also, the parents can be challenged to help the child to learn and also link with other parents who are also going through the Parents Together program so that they can help as a group rather than just trying to get through themselves. So its impact is quite phenomenal in different ways. Oh, thank you so much. And we've got the team from NCBI, Parents Together, Royston, June, Shola and St. Hilia. Thank you so much for being part of the For You Too. It's a date. And we're gonna make sure that individuals join in the program so that parents can get support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us.